Hey guys, and welcome to another Factorio workshop. As always, I'm joined by Matt Zuri. Greetings. And today we're going over something a little bit different. This is going to be a fairly short video, uh, pretty straightforward, but it's something we haven't covered, and I've actually seen uh, over time since 15 came out uh, quite a few questions in regards to controlling um, the science pack output and satellite input um, with silos uh, now that you get the space science packs from them, uh, because it can actually be fairly frustrating to... Uh, like way overproduce on the space science and it can consume a lot of materials you may not want to consume at the moment um, in terms of launching the rockets when you don't need to. So uh, today we set up a system here uh, which is very straightforward uh, just to demonstrate how you could uh, control and limit the uh, input and output of this. So uh, there's a few things. Uh, I don't know if you want to go over this part, Zuri. Well, it's a pretty standard logistics setup. Also, always, always, always put Productivity 3 modules in your silo. It yes. is the single most effective use of Productivity modules you'll if that's possible in the game, in vanilla anyway. Yeah, I think they'll pay for themselves in like 17 seconds or something, wasn't it? Yeah, with eight speed beacons, it's 17 seconds for payoff period. Yeah, so definitely always do that. Uh, a nice side note there. Uh, but it's very simple logistics conditions, uh, but... Some people may not know you can do this, but what you can do is if you go into your satellite or into your rocket silo, or you have an option to auto launch with cargo, which uh, if you want an automated uh, you know, way of actually getting science packs and doing the science, you will want to do this. So you're not having to manually run over here and launch it every time. Um, but if you don't control the input or output, then it's just gonna infinitely launch until it just eats all your materials and you have however many bazillions of science packs sitting here. So uh, what you can do is you set to auto launch, but then you can control your satellite input inserter uh, based on a science pack amount, the space science pack. So here we set it to less than or equal to 2000. So as soon as there is, well, if it's equal to 2000 or less than, it can insert a satellite, but once it gets above 2000, um, it won't insert a satellite until it drops back down. And, uh, and this kind of just lets you control this. Now, you could use a wire condition if, for example, you didn't have a network here or you wanted it just based on the local um, export chests here as well. Uh, maybe you were like belting them somewhere, not using robots for some reason or something. So you could just wire this up uh, and do it that way as well. Just wire it to the output chests. And then uh, I've just demonstrated a way down here if you want to actually control from the production end of your satellites uh, is I've just set this guy to uh, only work if there's less than 2,000 space science packs. You could also control the input if you like really want to cap things so it doesn't even start inserting materials until it needs to. Uh, but that's pretty much this. Now Zuri, I'll let you cover. You, you had a few comments in regards to a couple different ways you could do this in creating like a range if you need that. Yeah, well, I really should have set up uh, a belt-based version of this, too, for, for this. But if you want to, you can, if you exceed, like your total science consumption rate exceeds what you can do with a single rocket silo, you'll have to set up more than one rocket silo. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want them all launching simultaneously every single time, you could stagger this the amount on this fast inserter. For instance, you can go, you know, I... Uh, 2k is about the highest you want to go and you just stagger them linearly down to zero from there right so if you have two you you do uh 1k or a third one for you know zero and 1k or you know four 500 1500 as well as those mm -hmm. you know stuff like that so that you don't launch them all the time and if you you're maintaining a certain amount of science because you're not consuming that much it'll maintain, you know, enough to keep it going without flooding it. Right. Which is, you can imagine, a very, very expensive thing to buffer up if you're not using them. Yeah, it can get out of hand uh, pretty quick. And uh, the, the other reason as well to do this is because I believe, I, I could be wrong, so <laughs> don't, uh, don't, just instantly believe me, but I believe based on some things I read when 15 first came out that once the space science packs get to a certain amount in the rocket silo inventory here, um, it, it won't give you any more. Like, like 
if you just let this buffer up, right, if you were to just not control this, you know, launch enough rockets to fill your output chest and uh, then also let it build up in the silo, um, it would keep launching rockets, but then it would be a complete waste because once there's enough packs in here, I don't remember the exact number, it would, it just wouldn't give you anymore because they wouldn't fit. So you would essentially just be wasting all the materials for launching a rocket at that point if you didn't control your satellite input and just let it kind of go forever. That that doesn't sound like fun at all. No, that's a that's a very expensive mistake. Um, but yeah, you said we should have set up a belt based thing, but really the only difference would be just wiring it to chests, pretty much. I mean, I suppose you could just stick it straight the pack straight onto belts, but I would imagine you want to put them in chests first and then onto a belt. I can rig something up real quick. Just something like um. Just something like that, and you wire these two boxes to that inserter. And I recommend if you do this just to to do one stack. Mm -hmm. So always set the set the inserter to one k. Right. And uh, yeah, there you go. So that that's pretty much as simple as it gets for that as well. You can do some other stuff. Zuri was mentioning. A potential timer system. I'm not sure how reliable that's going to be or if it's something you really want to implement. I mean, it, it could work, but that's getting a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Yeah, you could use a similar system to what some people try to do with the nuclear power plants, but I'm not really convinced that would work here. And I am really dissatisfied with how it works with nuclear, so I'm not, it doesn't make me happy. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some problems there, but there you go, guys. If you uh, if you know if you had issues with this or didn't really know yet uh, how to control this type of thing, then hopefully this helped you out. Uh, if you already knew, maybe this gave you some other ideas anyway. But uh, I believe that's gonna do it. Unless you have any last thoughts, Zuri. Nope. All right. As always, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and we'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. As always, we will actually blueprint this for you, um, and that will be in the description, just so you can. Uh, you know, mess around with it how you like. But until next time, we will catch you later. Later.